Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's episode is a little bit different. I've done a voiceover for you. So I created this bib from a store-bought bib. Um, and I tweaked it a little bit, but you'll see all of that in the whole thing. Um, so I'm super excited to show you this because it is a little bit different for me. I had always been one to actually take patterns from other things. This is kind of normal for me to have done this, whereas working with patterns that are bought, that was so, so foreign to me. So I'm excited to do something that I actually kind of don't really know how to do because when you're taking a pattern from something that already exists, it's kind of and completely unknown. But I, I know the process and I understand that I'm gonna make mistakes and stuff like that. So also just quickly, I did forget to mention this in the voiceover, but I am using PUL fabric, which stands for polyurethane laminated. Yeah, polyurethane laminate so it's cotton on top and then it is lined with like a, a polyurethane essentially and it's waterproof but it is not stain proof whereas the one the store-bought bib that I have is actually uh, that is PVC so that is it's, it's not stain proof but it's a lot more stain resistant than perhaps this PUL has been used heaps at the moment for nappies. Ooh, got a little excited there. It's been used heaps for nappies and things like that. So it isn't 100% stain proof, but it's not that hard to get them out either. So just be aware if you do decide to use PUL, it is, I believe, a knit type of fabric. So, well, it behaves like a knit anyway because it does have stretch. So, but only if it's so slight stretch at the same time. So, I don't really know what it is. Um, but I have, yeah, you'll see what I'm talking about in the voiceover and the everything. So, I'll stop rambling now and let's get into the actual video. All right, so here I am just sort of working out the easiest way to figure out the pattern piece, basically. So I just decided I would trace the whole thing and then cut it in half because the ruffles were kind of in the way the whole time. So I was like, that's kind of going to be the easiest to do the half. So I just cut it out. I used other scissors other than my fabric scissors to do this so and then I just simply folded the whole thing in half and cut that one in half I mean you don't have to cut it in half really but just thought that would be easier then I needed to do the pocket which was pretty easy uh, it was just that bottom piece and then I just used the ruler to do the whole thing quickly wrote the details on it as well just so I knew what piece was which. And then here I am working out the ruffles. This was actually quite a challenge, but so simple once I did the math. Like it took a bit, but I just kind of roughly figured out uh, like the length of them at the finish, like for the finishing. And then I just added uh enough for the ruffles or the pleats I should say really it was more of a pleat than a ruffle and then I just added a little bit extra for the seam allowance really and yeah I actually can't remember the seam allowance I am assuming I did a quarter inch seam allowance because that's usually basically what I do um, which I'm pretty sure that was or um, yeah I'm pretty sure it was a quarter inch or it was three eighths. Oh, maybe it was three eighths. I'm really, I actually can't remember and I need to go back and have a look at that actually. <laughs> so I can do it for my next ones. So yeah, I'm just trying to figure out sort of the amount of extra I needed on there. And then, so I did the widest part of the ruffle. I didn't 
add any extra though because I wanted it a slightly smaller than the original piece only because um, Lila is quite small and I noticed that the bought version it kind of gets in her way so I just sort of thought well I'll just do it to what it is at the moment and then that should be enough sort of off of it anyway. So again, just cutting that piece. I only needed to do one piece, obviously. And then that, that that's it. So I decided I would use a t an old t-shirt of mine for the tester. I didn't have any scrap fabric in the same material as what I was making the bib out of, but I knew it was a knit fabric, so I just used the t-shirt because that's a type of knit fabric out of this particular one. In this process, I actually realized a few things. The pocket needed to be adjusted the sh like in the shape and the construction of the ruffles, I could do a lot easier once I actually figured it out. For some reason, I thought that I needed to sort of hem each ruffle first, but um, you'll see what I do in a minute. So this is what I was talking about, like hemming it. Like, I don't know why I thought I needed to do it this way, but I soon figure it out because it was a pain in the bum to do it like this. There's my cat in there as well. A quick tip too is if you have directional fabric, make sure all your pieces are the right way. I forgot this and well, one of the pieces is a bit not quite right. Lucky the pattern isn't super obvious for this. So yeah. But I did make the conscious effort or conscious decision to make the pocket a different direction just so it gave it a bit of contrast really. Uh, but you will see my mistake shortly. <laughs> You'll be like, oh, how did you even do that? Honestly, you ready for it? Watching and... Oh, that was just me thinking about how I'm going to do it. Hang on a second. It's coming. Oh, so I cut out that one ruffle and then wait for it. Boom. <laughs> I flipped that so that I could use less fabric and I didn't realize what I had done until it was basically too late. I love how this looks like I'm going a bat out of hell, but the reality with a sleeping baby is actually like this. Sleeping baby and noisy fabric, uh, sorry, a noisy sewing machine. <laughs> yeah, not a great mix. If you can relate, you know what I mean. I then also clipped all of the curves just to make it a little bit easier. I had already clipped one side and then sewed it like this because it wasn't until after I clipped it that I went, oh, hang on a second, I could actually do this way easier. I then just top stitched it as well just to make them sit a little bit flatter. I've just, I've come to love top stitching. I used to think it was a bit of a, a bit of a furphy really, but yeah, I just, it, it does actually make a huge difference to that finished look. And on the original piece, it actually is top stitched as well. So I just thought, you know what, let's make this look half decent and professional. I'm just showing you what I'm talking about with the top stitching there. So yeah. Um, the original bib had four pleats, but I did decide to just do three in the end. I tried to do four, but it just kind of wasn't enough. Like I didn't have enough length even though it was exactly the same length and everything, it just did not work. So I just went for the three pleats. It kind of made it a bit easier in the end anyway. 
So then I decided I'd do a basting stitch for this. This is another tip I've learned from doing patterns, like actually reading off a pattern. Basting stitch is like the bomb. Means things don't move when you're actually doing the proper stitch. Oh, look at that. So the pleats were all nice and they stayed still <laughs> for me when I actually ended up doing the proper stitching. So this is also where I stuffed up. So this whole pattern or this whole experience was like literally the first time I had done it. So it was a real learning curve for me. I realized that I needed to actually put the ruffles facing the in ways or like into the center of the bib first, then sew that like that and then fold it over. Now I didn't realize that. And well, this is me realizing that I didn't realize that very annoyed at myself. And so I unpicked both sides because I'd already done both sides. What a silly deal. Anyway, so this is me redoing it. I didn't pin, I didn't do anything because I was so annoyed at myself. I just went, all right, I'm just gonna bloody well put them on there and see how it goes. But it worked and I only did one side at a time this time. <laughs> so I, yeah, I, like I said, you needed to do the ruffle in ways and then top stitch it out ways basically. Then I just simply attached the pocket and Bob's your uncle for the construction basically of the whole thing. So I also finished it off with bias binding around the edges. So like you get rid of all of that nasty looking edges basically. But I had never really used bias binding before. So this again was a massive learning curve for me. I thought that you had to unravel the bias binding, then attach one side. Anyway, it not the case. You can actually just sort of wedge the edge into the two and do one big lot or like one big line of it. But unfortunately, that is it for me, guys. I didn't record any more. So here is some light footage. <laughs> of the finished product i hope you enjoyed all of that thank you guys so much for watching if you've gotten this far make sure you hit that like and the subscribe button and if you want to know be notified when i do upload hit the notification bell and it will let you know automatically so yeah i hope you enjoyed that one and i will talk to you in the next episode next week i am so excited to bring it out to you because it's something i've been working on it's kind of a two-parter because i haven't actually gotten around to actually making the other half but super excited to show you catches around next time guys hey!